with thy praise out of my stony griefs let the all raise so by my woes to be nearer my god to thee nearer my god to thee nearer to thee praise the lord amen, amen. amen. and now we have a treat for you fine folk tonight Words of devotion and inspiration from preacher James Wilde. Please give him a warm Canadian welcome. I'm troubled, friends. A man wracked with confusion and worry and doubt, and I'll tell you why. I thought when I crossed the border into your fine country that I would be entering into the good Lord's dominion. Cool, clear water, northern air, and majestic mountain peaks. But I don't see any of that here. No siree. You know, I heard tell that you all call this place Toronto the Good. <laughs> but it sure don't seem that to me. All I see is a lusty temptress and not much good at all. So I have to ask myself, who am I talking to here? Am I talking to a room full of sinners? I said, am I talking to a room full of sinners? <laughs> well, then I guess I must be talking to a room full of liars. Because I'm a sinner. Not proud of it, but it's the truth. You a sinner, Sister Mary? I am. You hear that, friends? Now, you would think that there was no one on God's green earth as pure as Sister Mary Ellen Marks, and yet you heard it from her own lips. She has fallen for the temptations of little Lord Lucifer himself. But there ain't no shame in being a sinner. Even the godly sin. So, who out there is a sinner? Hi. I'm a sinner, preacher, James. Just like you. Well, look at that there. <laughs> Seems I don't need to go looking for that Diogenes fella and his lamp to find an honest man. Seems I got one standing right in front of me. Ain't no sin in being a sinner, friend, no sin at all. But it is a sin to ignore the word of the Lord. Now, you've been doing that? You yeah. have. You ready to get over doing that? And are you ready to renounce Satan and welcome in the Lord? Yes. And are you ready to accept the love and judgment of Jesus Christ? I am. Are you ready to say, so long, Beelzebub, goodbye, Lucifer? You ready to kick old mammon right out the door? Yes! Yes! Gentlemen, Jesus Christ has got one powerful left hook. <laughs> you know, he's more powerful than the Galveston giant Jack Johnson himself. He's got TNT in his right hand. He's got nitro in his left. He needs help. He's not breathing. Is there a doctor in here? I'm a nurse. He doesn't need a doctor. What do you mean? He's dead.
until he accepted Jesus into his heart. Praise God. 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 Oh, sister. Praise God. How are you faring? Oh, fine, Thomas. I've seen a dead body before. What are you doing here? Uh, I saw the banner. It seemed interesting. Sister Mary Ellen is quite well known. I thought I'd give them a listen. Bloody hell. Not in here, Thomas. Oh, uh, you a man of God? A police detective. Ah. Uh, been a man doing the Lord's work, a noble profession. Although, I uh, bet you both of us have seen our share of sinners. Ain't that right? What happened? The spirit of Jesus entered him and carried him home. Oh, he did, did he? I, I saw it myself. <clears throat> I would prefer a more scientific explanation. Do you have any idea who this man is? Just a lost soul looking to find God's love. You've never seen him before? Might have, might not. Hard to say. I see a lot of people. How about you, miss? Sister, Mary Ellen. And no, I have not. We only arrived yesterday in your fair city. And fair it is. <laughs> it's chilly, sir, but there is the smell of industry in the air, the, the sound of progress, the feel of a city full of good, hard-working people. Can I see your authorization to hold this gathering? We have God's authority. But you don't have mine, nor the city's. Well, I'll talk to your city council. I'm sure they'll grant me permission before our next meeting. You're planning another. Toronto is in need of saving. We will be here as long as people need to hear the good word. We'll see about that. By all outward appearances, the man seems to be in good health. A bit malnourished, but that's it. Oh, apparently he just keeled over dead. Taken by the spirit of the Lord, it's it. Oh. I've seen singing and dancing at the Baptist Calvary. I've even seen someone speaking in tongues once. No. Good Lord. I haven't seen anyone fall over dead for no reason. Oh, what about snakes? Have you ever seen one of those preachers who use the snakes? I have not. Me neither. It would be something to see, though. What are you doing? Due diligence. As I said, this man appears to be in great physical shape. Must be a foreign agent that caused this. They should both be run out of town. That's not a very charitable position. They have no right to be here. You should have seen it last night. It was a carnival of depravity. It seems that everything by all comes from our neighbors down south. And how do you know where they're from? Sister Mary Ellen's been running a revival meetings for years down in the United States. Seems they've decided to take their show to our fine country. Without any official permission, sir, they are con artists, plain and simple. Stealing from the naive and foolish. Just make them leave. You have our blessings. I don't need your blessings. They have no permit, so they can't operate. But I am not running them out of town. They are a scourge! Is that so? Seems to me like you lot can't take the competition. I take offense to that, sir. Take whatever you want. But you can also take your leave. I, gentlemen, have real work to do. Now, good day. I don't expect any of you folks to be as noble as this fella, Job. Now, he was a heck of a guy. Always stood tall. Man lost his wife, lost all his children, lost everything, lived a life of pain, blistered and bleeding. Yet he never once cursed the man upstairs. But that ain't me, folks. I'll admit, there's plenty of times I've cursed the man upstairs because sometimes he just don't make life easy. Ain't that right? It's okay to admit it. Sometimes life ain't right, and plenty of times it just ain't easy. And when it gets real hard, when you think you just can't bear it any longer, that's when Satan and his consort Beelzebub come a-calling. And then lickety-split, before you know it, you're just like that fella Lot, following for the temptations of worldly pleasures. But make no mistake, our pal God, our big buddy God, he's the one who put those temptations on this earth in the first place to test us. You are a blasphemer. Oh, am I, sir? Ain't it true that God created all things in heaven and on earth? He did. So he created all creatures, good and bad, the gentle little kitty cat and the angry old crocodile, the pious and the pervert, the angel and the whore. Are they not all God's creatures? They are. Oh, good to see you and me agree on that. 
course, that's where the similarity ends, ain't it, Father? We have many more differences than that, sir. Oh, we do. We surely do. See, folks, these Catholics are a funny bunch. They say they worship God, but they don't really. They worship this fella in Rome, Italy, they call the Pope. They say he speaks for God, but he lives in a palace full of riches stolen from the people. Ain't that right? It is not. Oh, of course he'd say that, folks. He has to, to keep y'all filling up his plate on Sundays and twice on holidays. You watch your profane mouth, sir. Let's just walk away. He has no license to do this. He has no right. Arrest him. Preacher, do you mind? Absolutely, Constable. I have no desire to create any unrest or upset. Throw him in jail. Father, please, let's just walk away. Nice talking to you, Father. Oh, dear lady, you again. <laughs> what brings you out to listen to my rantings on such a fine day? Rantings? Is that what you consider them? Many do. Mm. I take it you're not one of them. I like to keep an open mind. Then you are a rare bird. <laughs> Your husband is that policeman, right? An inspector. Ah, oh, well then, a man of intelligence and character. I suppose so. Then perhaps I could ask you a favor. It depends on the favor. May I have a word with your husband? Me and him got off on the wrong foot. I'll bring you to him, but whatever Thomas decides to do is his own decision. That is as it should be. It's good when a man knows his own mind. Indeed. <laughs> Shall we? Yes. Yeah, just this way. Analysis of his blood revealed there was an enormous amount of cocaine in his system. Could have very well caused a cerebral hemorrhage, which was indeed the cause of death. So he killed himself, misusing cocaine? I wouldn't be so sure of that, Constable Crabtree. After examining the body a little more thoroughly, I saw this injection mark right here. It's an area difficult to reach on one's self. Well, not impossible, though. If he injected himself, why would he choose there? Unless someone else did it. Who? Well, that's impossible to know, George, until we at least know who he is. My next order of business. Precisely. Thank you, Miss Hart. So you have your permit. Congratulations. I must say I'm surprised. I've never known city council move so quickly. I'm well practiced in the powers of persuasion, hmm. sir. I have to let you know, you're not everyone's cup of tea around here. Those who deliver the truth are rarely without opposition. Thomas, this man would like to have a word you with you. You got the permit. <laughs> Your golden tongue has worked its magic once again. What do you want? Sir, I just want to assure you that neither I nor Sister Mary want to cause any trouble. We are only interested in the business of saving souls. I don't care what you do as long as you behave yourself. That I will do. I will be as righteous as Isaiah, as pure as Daniel. Out of my office now. I'm already moving. You too. Good day. Thomas, I really think he's a good man. Think what you like, Margaret. I want no part of him. <sighs> How you doing, fella? <laughs> you are an abomination. You go on now. I'll see you later. What do you say? You behave yourself. I don't want any more trouble with the police. I'll be an angel. A model of dignity, decorum, and decency. A shining beacon of virtue in an otherwise cruel and godless world. Staying out of trouble will be more than enough. Uh, Constable, a word? And who are you? James Wilde. Oh, the preacher. <laughs> Guilty as charged. And what is this poor unfortunate being charged with? Solicitation. Oh, the poor lost soul. Might I speak with her? She may appreciate my counsel. Just for a moment. What are you doing here? I told you it was over between us. You shouldn't be here. Hmm, is that so? Well, I am, and as it would appear, I am now available. And so, it wasn't what we expected, but our son Bobby wants to become a priest. <laughs> 
That looks delicious. <laughs> I guess you gotta go to a place called Hogtown to enjoy chops as fine as these. <laughs> well, you should try mine sometime. Well, that would surely be an honor. <laughs> now, Mrs. Brackenreed. Oh, Margaret, surely. All right. Now, Margaret, I have no problem with anyone who wants to dedicate his life to the Lord, but I fear your son is going down the wrong path. How do you mean? Well, you don't want him becoming a Catholic. I mean, some of them are good people, but they are being sold a bill of goods. How so? Well, like I said in the square, they're not worshiping God. They're worshiping a man. And he gets to be the living voice of God for no other reason than a bunch of his buddies chose him. Now, does that make sense to you? They know more about God than I do. Do they? Maybe you don't got to know God. Maybe you just got to feel him in your heart. You don't need anyone else butting into that relationship. What are you doing back here? I just made bail for one of your prisoners. Mm, let me guess, the pretty redhead. Bingo, bango, Inspector. You got a keen eye. The lady needs salvation. <laughs> Is that what they call it these days? <laughs> oh, that's a good one, sir. Real good one. She sure ain't hard to look at, I'll give you that. I thought you men of the cloth were above that. Hey, I'm a red-blooded mortal man just like you. Ain't no saint got no intention of being one. I'm just... God's servant on earth, so I do the best I can. Poor young lady's a sinner. I'm just trying to guide her toward the light. I'm sure you are. And between you and me, I lay one hand on that girl and Sister Mary'd have my head on a plate. You and Sister? A lot of lonely nights on the road, sir. Lots of lonely nights. <laughs> but you know all about that, I bet. Ah, how you doing, detective? Pleasant morning of genuflecting. I've learned something very interesting about the man who died at your... We like to call it a revive. His body was filled with an enormous amount of cocaine. Would you know anything about that? Never did care for that devil dust. Always got me a bit too jittery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lady to say. I think we're done here. I hear this James Wilde is a compelling speaker. Perhaps churches could use more like him. Father O'Leary preaches a provocative sermon. I don't know about that, but he's definitely better than most sleeping tablets. Julia, at any rate, James Wilde is a sideshow man. He's not a man of God. A sideshow man? Like turning water into wine? Sir! What have you, George? I've circulated photographs of the deceased. You got a response. I did. His name is Alfred Sturker. He's wanted by the police in Akron, Ohio. Akron? Well, that's where those two started their crusade. Should I bring them in for questioning? Not just yet, George. It's not enough. But we should definitely start with a few questions about their life in Akron. Right. Well, not without me. I'd like to see the circus. Rahab. Vashti. Tamar. Y'all know him. Or you think you do. Wanton lust demons who destroyed men's souls. All sinful women. All beyond redemption. But is anyone beyond redemption? I can tell you from my own life that I sure as hell hope that ain't the case. Because if you fall down, you got to get back up again. Now you do that and the good Lord will never let you down. Hell, he'll probably even give you a, a hand up, a slap on the back, and the good get going. So come on up here, sweetheart. There's no one gonna hurt you. <laughs> Say hello to Sue. Hello. <laughs> well, look at that there. Seems like you're welcome here. And why shouldn't she be? Are we not all his children? Even if we fall off the rails, even if we surrender to the sins of the flesh and fornication, we can be forgiven. Well, that's good to know. A 
Are you ready to be forgiven? I am. Are you ready to be reborn? I, I, mean, I guess. Oh! You, Susan Mishkin, are going to be cleansed of your sins. Your days and nights of fornication are coming to an end. The water and the spirit of the Lord will wash over you and your sins. William. I can see. George. Cleansed and you will be born again in the spirit of the Lord. And you will be born. I almost lost myself. The spirit of the Lord is a powerful thing. Are you all right? Say he almost killed her. I think he might have if William hadn't pulled her out of the water. Is he behind bars? No. I didn't think it wise to arrest him in front of his followers. You're probably right. So should we arrest him now? I don't know about that, but perhaps a strong warning about his behavior. You are a liar and a fornicator. Please just get out. I will not. Now you listen to me. Get off her. I this isn't your business. We'll decide that. You said you were through with that Harley. And I am. Thing is, she ain't through with me. She's preying on me, Mary. She's a Jezebel. I'm just trying to turn her into a good woman. No, I doubt that. It's the truth. I want nothing from her. I just want to save her soul. She followed you here all the way from Akron. She was your tramp there, now she's your tramp here. Now, there's no need to be uncharitable, Mary. All right, you'd best come with us. Oh, no. no, why do we need to be doing that? All you're seeing here is two passionate followers of the good Lord above having a little disagreement. What I am seeing here is a man who attempted to murder someone. Murder? Well, if that isn't the most fool thing I ever heard. You best keep your mouth shut. Let's go. Good evening, sister. I would never have harmed that woman. You were indulging in a little bit of how's your father with you, though, weren't you? Oh, no putting one past you, is that? Tell me about Alfred Starker. Who's he? The man who died at your first revival meeting. Susan Mishkin's husband. Never laid eyes on him. They were both from Akron, Ohio. They followed you here. Never said I'd never heard of him, only said I'd never laid eyes on him. All I know is he was a terrible man who forced his wife into prostitution and was living off the avails of her sin. If was ever a man needed saving, it was him. Saving or killing? Well, it seemed to amount to the same thing this time, didn't it? How mighty convenient for you that he's gone. I don't follow. Well, there's no one to get in between you and her now, is there? Uh, Inspector, Inspector, I got no interest in Sue Mishkin. My heart belongs to Sister Mary. And what about your other body parts? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Can't always control the other parts, can you? Thing is, girls like Sue are a dime a dozen. I need to get dipped. There are plenty of honey pots in every town I visit that are happy to oblige. Then why try to kill her on stage? I did no such thing. The spirit of the Lord got hold of me. Again, I ask you about Alfred Starker, the man that died at your revival meeting. Like I said, I had nothing to do with his death. What do you know? That sweet sound? Oh, surely, boss, that is the furthest thing from hell. I tell you, I never believed in angels until I laid eyes on Sister Mary. Shall we gather at the river? The beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Well, this is all very nice. Now, if you'd like to go home. Not without Brother James Wilde. We are still questioning him. Then I would suggest you conclude. You're not in a position to suggest anything. Now, please, move along. I shall not. Now, now, please, this will solve nothing. Sir, I may not have been blessed with the bombast of James Wilde, but let me assure you, my spine is forged iron. We will not move, even if you trample these fine people with your horses. Do we have enough to hold him? 
is a stretch. Right, let him go. I'm not putting up with this palaver. Thank you, friends. <laughs> oh, the sweet taste of freedom. <laughs> Can you believe it? In prison for simply preaching the word of God. Constable, please go and fetch Susan Mishkin from the hotel. Finally, I thought you were going to keep me in here all day. I assume you know this man? All too well. Did you travel here to Toronto with him? No, I did not. He must have followed me. You left him? Yes. I thought I should before he killed me. Apparently, he had found God. <laughs> sure he did. He found everything while he was high on the devil's dust. Mr. Starker was a cocaine user? Yes. It's the reason I spent half my life lying flat on my back. <clears throat> we found an injection mark on Mr. Starker's body. Someone injected cocaine into his system. And that person would be Alfred? Oh, I don't believe so. It would have been very difficult for him to reach. He was probably just trying to hide it from me. He told me he was turning over a new leaf. And you didn't believe him? I'd seen Alfred turn over far too many leaves. And you wanted to be rid of him? Killing is a mortal sin. And I am done sinning. I'm born anew. We may have to reconcile ourselves to the fact that Alfred Starker's death was an accident. Those two are definitely con artists. That doesn't make them murderers. They are fleecing innocent people. They're taking money from people who are giving it willingly. After being fed false promises. You don't feel the need to knock? Surely you can get those two out of town. They have as much right to be here as you. Neither one of them is ordained by any church. They are selling lies. Not the only ones, in my opinion. So you're going to do nothing about it. Good day, sir. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You seem a godly woman. I am. Then how can you permit a person like James Wilde to preach at your revivals? He brings in the people. Is that all that matters? Of course not. James believes in his own way and speaks in words the people understand. He tells them that it's all right to sin so long as they ask for forgiveness afterwards. How is that different than confession? Hmm? We can all fall to temptation, even the godly. Isn't that so? It's up to the godly to resist temptation. Then you are better than most mortal men, sir. James Wilde and I are simply doing our best in the wicked world and bringing hope to those that will listen. While they empty their pockets. We simply pass the collection plate as all others do. I'm sure preacher James Wilde will be here any moment. This ain't your normal night. Uh, 
least not for yours truly, no siree. And uh, I must confess to a little case of the nerves. But you know what they say, a man ain't really a man until he has the love of a good woman. And seems like I got that. So I'd like to introduce you all to my bride-to-be. Come on, get up, everybody. It's the bride. <laughs> Come on up here, sweetheart. I'd like to invite you all to the ceremony. <laughs> Uh, you never know what joy the day will bring. Well, that solves that then. The two of them got together to kill her husband. But we can't prove it. That may be. But it's as clear as day, isn't it? Oh. Brackenry. Well, maybe not as clear as day. Poor girl. Were there any witnesses? Constables are still canvassing the area. If you find anything else, Miss Hart. Get off me! Sue! Mr. Wild. Oh, Sue, my dear Sue. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> I killed her. You did? Do what you want with me. I don't care. She's dead because of me. I'm so sorry. That's enough. Come on. Stevens, take him to the station house. Put him in the cells. That's that, my dog. Confession. One that makes no sense. I'm no better than Paul. It was my pride that caused her death. I thought I could save her and bring glory to God. But I was only trying to bring glory to myself. Did you or did you not kill her? My actions did. The truth, please, sir. You are facing your own death. Sir? I have the cause of death. Well, cocaine overdose, just like her husband. I see. Thank you, Miss Hart. I'm charging you with two counts of murder. Two? For the murder of Mrs. Sue Mishkin and her husband, Alfred Starker. I did not kill Mrs. Starker. They both died by the same method. I said I did not kill Mr. Stark. Then who did? I suspect Sue did. It was the only way to be free of him. She tried to run. He always followed. Why should I believe you? You were a shyster and a con man. Leave what you want of me, but you and I are the same. We both worship the Lord. I ask you again, did you kill her? I did not. And I have no reason to lie. I am forsaken. I will never enter the kingdom of heaven. If you thought she did kill her husband, why marry her? <laughs> well, the moth cannot resist the flame, detective. And that is all I am, a moth. And what did Sister Mary think of your marriage? Not much, I expect. That devil is a sneaky sort. But never doubt his power. Never doubt what he can do if you let your guard down. If the devil can possess a man like James Wilde, he can possess any one of you. James has forsaken us all for a woman of easy virtue, a slatterly dame, a harlot who has turned James away from God and taken him in her sinful arms. Dead. 
she was found this morning. Our coroner believes she died last evening. Just hours after her wedding. A shame. It must have been quite a shock for you to find out about James Wilde's wedding right on your stage. There is little James Wilde could do that would still shock me. You didn't look happy they were getting married. I wasn't. So what do you think happened? Either she or Mr. Wilde killed her husband so that they could be together. And then? Someone killed her. Me. He betrayed you, did he not? Turned your revival into a proper sideshow. He brought people in here. More people than I had ever seen before. James was my main attraction. And he broke your heart. My heart belongs to the Lord and the Lord alone, Detective Murdoch. I did have carnal feelings for James. Even acted on them on occasion. But he never had my heart. Where were you last night? The Don River, I believe it's called. For what reason? For baptism. I delivered five new believers into the arms of the Lord. For the last time. For the last time? What does that mean? With James gone, this revival will die. I see. I would appreciate you not leaving Toronto until this matter is concluded. Don't worry, Detective. I have no intention of pulling up stakes. This is my home now. I'm going to start a new life. One without deception and spectacle. How do you mean? I'm leaving this behind. Joining one of your city's churches. It was late. There was no one about. So no one saw anything? Sir. Perhaps the preacher was here the night she died. What do you have there? Too small for finger marks. Oh, we won't be needing finger marks, George. I hear congratulations are in order. You have arrested that vile creature. Please, have a seat. You wanted to see me? I did. I noticed that your cross is missing. Could this be it? I suppose it could be. Could be. Interesting. Especially considering where it was found right beside the dead body of Susan Mishkin. I also read your latest church bulletin. I see here that Sister Mary Ellen is your new choir master. Congratulations. I suppose uh, now that James Wilde is locked up, there were few places she could go. Or perhaps she had simply seen the light. Is there a point to all of this? Yes. You made your dislike of James Wilde quite clear. He was a blasphemer and a fraud. And half of your congregation left to follow him. They were being deceived by a charlatan, an offensive man who was making a mockery of all we stand for. I also found this in your church office. Liquid cocaine, the same substance that was used to kill Susan Mishkin. What were you doing with it? He was a demon, a wolf dressed in sheep's clothing, taking people off the path and forcing them to worship him. He had to be stopped. So you killed Susan Mishkin and Alfred Starker and tried to pin it all on James Wilde. I killed her, but I didn't kill him. Besides, a harlot and her husband, they were both destined for hell. Maybe so, but that wasn't your decision to make.
Praise the Lord, free at last. You were only imprisoned one night. Yes, but it felt like an eternity. But being out here, I can feel the good Lord coming back to me, urging me not to give up on him. And I don't plan to. And what of Sue Mishkin? Well, I've been doing a lot of thinking and reflecting on that. And the way I see it, she left this world an honest woman after she let the Lord into her heart. You've lost your pulpit, huh? Oh, I'll find another. There's always a place for a man who's delivering the good word. If that's what you're doing. Are you going to tell me I'm not? I'm spreading the word of God far and wide to those who care to listen. Hey, you say you're a man of God, don't you? I try. Well, then you should be doing the same as me. Well, there's plenty of souls need saving. And if you believe, if you really believe, that's our job. Our duty is to proselytize, evangelize, and sanitize. I know the teachings. Thank you. Well, then you should be loud and proud of it. Uh, a horse ain't drinking water unless you lead him to it. You see, that's, that's where you're wrong. A horse will not drink unless it's thirsty. If someone truly, truly needs God, they'll find him. They don't need you getting involved. Oh, hey there, brother. Have you got a moment to talk about the evils of this world? Oh, it's a cruel place, this damnable old world, ain't it? Now, no, you don't have to answer right away, but let me tell you a little story. A story about a man named Paul. That, that wasn't his name at the beginning, but you know, he had to change it. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been 90 days since my last confession. God is here to listen. Food, call me Monty Luffy. I've been making all this news, so don't call me no pussy. I had to switch it up again, I'm creating, I'm goofy. And if you try to fuck it up, I won't end up so spooky. Thieves. Thieves. Food, call me Monty Luffy. I've been making all these moves, so don't call me no pussy. I had to switch it up again, I'm creating, I'm goofy. And if you try to fuck it up, I won't end up so smoothly. Stretch it out, come the food, call me Monty Luffy. I've been making all these moves, so don't call me no pussy. I had to switch it up again, I'm creating, I'm goofy. And if you try to fuck it up, I won't end up so smoothly. Don't make me go gear full, because I'm gonna start a riot, maybe even start a war. I'm gonna use my bare fist, I don't even need a sword. I already got a source, man, you know, so I finna roar. If you fuck with my crew, my anger's finna soar. I'm called a fifth. Ever for a reason, I'm as crazy as a boar I'ma hit you with this one piece as I goof off and explore I might get myself in trouble, but I always get the score, yeah Stretch it out, gunga fruit, call me Monty Luffy I've been making all these moves, so don't call me no pussy I had to switch it up again, I'm creating, I'm goofy And if you try to fuck it up, it won't end up so smoothly Stretch it out, gunga fruit, call me Monty Luffy I've been making all these moves, so don't call me no pussy I had to switch it up again, I'm creating, I'm goofy And if you try to fuck it up, it won't end up so smoothly I was hitting from broke cause I'm back to the bone And when my crew is on trouble, I get in the zone You made me mad, boy, I had cut to new the stone So if you meet me in person, you better watch your tone Make up, be on call, one day we did it all Alone. There is no essence of bucks, it's like you saw the dawn And at the end of the day, bitch, I will not die alone Because I am a father, I will send for my own Pussy poor, get out of my way You don't wanna waste me, I got these sticks in my veins Well, I've been an ass fool, I will send you ass to space So you throw your horse power, do you wanna fucking taste? And I'm not a shit talker, but I'll put you in your place If you want the one two, I will send you off the way And I'm not in the jokes, so these games will not be played that's what I'm gonna say Stretch it out, gunga fruit, call me Monkey Luffy I've been making all these moves, so don't call me no pussy I had to switch it up again, I'm creating, I'm goofy And if you try to fuck it up, I won't end up so smoothly Stretch it out, gunga fruit, call me Monkey Luffy I've been making all these moves, so don't call me no pussy